Well, you guys, it's official. I have Omnicron, so I'm sick. But like a pro, I am going to still make my YouTube videos, <laughs> even in my bathrobe, because we're going to keep it real. Um, so anyway, if you like my channel, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. I'll tell you what it feels like. Honestly, it feels like being on drugs, like your brain, you can't get clear and your mind races. Like it's constantly like you can't keep track of your thoughts. You know, you're just like, and it's like, I, I kind of feel neurotic, but like, like foggy, but neurotic. And then I keep like, all of a sudden I get like sneezing and a running nose. And then I'm so, I'm super dry and I get a headache. And then and then I get. I get like a fever and my nervous system goes crazy and then it's like calm again and it's like nothing happened. I just, uh, this is just, you know, and this is the light one. I don't, I don't think I ever had COVID. Um, I thought I had the gastric one because I threw up for like three days and I thought, but maybe it was just food poisoning now that I've had this. Wow. It's tough. Let me tell you. So, um, anywho, let's get into this video and stop. Oh, Dana, stop boo-hooing. You're fine. You'll be okay. Um, so this video is about Erica Jane and her cha-ching, which we all know is her focus point and her resonant d'etre in her life. So I wanted to talk about her salary that purportedly, uh, has dropped that people think she's making, which is incredible to me and some other stuff. So the New York Times said that Erica Jane Girardi was taking in 30000 per episode for season 11 and 600000 for the season, which was 20 episodes. Um, and then Tamara Tattle said that she thought that Erica was bringing in uh, $62,000, I think it was, per episode. Um, and actually was was going to go up by 10% in season 12. Um, also reported was that for the four-part reunion, Erica got 272000 for season 11's reunion. Um, that's a lot. Like, wow. So she's definitely out of that five-year window where you are on a set contract. And they're definitely throwing... If this is true, I mean... She's getting paid a lot. And I'm okay. wearing this mask. I'm just going to tell you today's meaning. I'm wearing this mask because she's just robbing everyone blind. Um, okay, now let's take a look at the ratings of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion season 11 because I keep seeing things thrown around on that. Um, it generated 1.517 million viewers and it uh, captured 54 Point fifty four of the 18 to 49 year old key demographic, which marked a season high. Still not as good as season two or one or three, just saying regular season, just saying. So I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the hair extension website yet, but it links directly to the people that she's outsourcing to. And it shows like the, the price point that she's paying for her extensions and it's obviously much cheaper than she's marked it up like a lot. You know, I want to say like it was $200 or something and she marked it up like 500 bucks. And it's the same exact hair. And she was oddly like not present enough to make her website hide who she was getting her hair from. Like you could just like go by direct. I, I, it was so weird. So I don't understand a woman with this kind of excess cash. <laughs> Why she would launch a so shantily her hair extension line? That's weird. Um, another. Also, I want to say that the reason I'm bringing up the um, ratings in the previous part of this video is because I just want to remind Bravo that if they just brought in like interesting people as an ensemble cast, they wouldn't have to bring in somebody who robbed from you know allegedly uh, robbed from widows and victims to subsidize their ridiculously awesome lifestyle. I, I just feel like we could maybe work a little harder 
and just get the get even higher ratings than the one and a half million views that they got for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion season eleven, based solely on the fact that the fans literally were so like disgusted with what was going on with the Girardis that they couldn't not watch because it was like so audacious that they would have no remorse. And, you know, yeah. Okay, well, we know too, by the way, in the last month, the trustee has gone in front of the judge and said that she really wants to see the details of Erica Jane Girardi's American Express uh, cards that were related to EJ Global that Tom Girardi issued to her because she feels that she could unravel transactions that are related to assets that she might be able to somehow get back from Erica Jane Jordy and liquidate. That's that's what, you know, it alludes. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it was me, I'd be trying to find liability with Erica Jane Jordy so I could attach myself to all these big earnings that she's going to be taking in for basically uh, making money off talking about the money that her, you know, husband allegedly took in a Ponzi scheme. I mean, at least that way you get, as she does, it's only fair, isn't it? That the creditors and the victims get money as Erica gets money, right? Especially since the plot point is them. Don't you think? I do. I'm a little cranky though, because I have a cold or a COVID, but still. I'm a little cranky, for sure. More than normal. <laughs> so it looks like they have a trial they're trying to set right now for January of 2023. And I can't wait for this if it happens. Um, they're doing it, I would imagine, to force her to settle. <clears throat> or she'll go to trial. I'm sure she'll go. She loves this. She's using it. Um, but anyway, uh, the trustee says they will be dispo- uh, deposing, sorry, I'm tired, 10 witnesses along with engaging experts to address accounting involved in the estate or involving in the estate. Further, they plan on hiring an expert to testify in court regarding the ethical obligations of an attorney. And then Jane uh, dropped a bombshell that she is uh, looking for additional discovery. Yeah. Now, I see you, Erica. I see you. You've asked to depose Tom Girardi, his employees, and in particular, the CFO of the company, who are all um, being investigated at the moment. Um, but I see you because what you're really doing is you're trying to make um, or call into question whether or not Tom Girardi could stand for a deposition because everybody knows someone who's in a conservatorship permanently can't be deposed and can't be a witness and can't participate in a case. So by her requesting that, she is implying that she believes that Tom Girardi is of sound mind and that he could be he could stand a deposition, which I would say is her trying to say, uh, don't bring a knife to a gunfight with me, Tom. I'm going to speculate, as I have for some time, that things between Erica and Tom Girardi behind the scenes being, uh, you know, transferred by family members back and forth in any communications that's transpiring either through attorneys or otherwise, I'm going to suggest that they're not that great, especially considering that he went and said that Erica knew everything to the cameras. So his one moment of clarity, he throws her under the bus, right? So I see the writing on the wall on this one. That's my speculation only. Okay, and I, as I mentioned, have COVID and I've got a cloudy mind. But one thing I do know is her lawyers know damn well that you can't depose someone in a conservatorship that purportedly has Alzheimer's unless you don't think that they do. And that's the threat, right? Because she's the one person that people would believe. This to me says, watch your back, Tom, because I've played ball thus far, but maybe I'm not willing to play ball much longer. And if she doesn't play ball, he's looking at 
you know, and he's found to have faked this conservatorship or be of sound mind. I mean, he's looking at criminal problems and, you know, dying in jail probably doesn't sound great to him. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's my speculation. It's not very sunny, but this light is very nice. Oh, I wish it was real. I need the sun so bad. Mass is really cold, you guys. I don't know how much longer I can take. <laughs> oh, I should go to California. Okay, right I'm now. going back to bed now. If you love my, well, not love, love's a strong word, but if you like my channel, <laughs> hit the like button, subscribe, and the notification button, and all that stuff that you do, and I did really appreciate, I did get some tips the other day, you guys. Thank you. That was really sweet. Thanks. I'm going to buy some Tylenol. 